Continuing to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and looking at the gospel as we uh, see what Paul is declaring to hear, he said in verse uh, uh, 1 of chapter 15, he said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. And then he says in verse 2, By which also ye are saved. And so we're saved by the gospel. The gospel is the only thing that can save us. The gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection is the only thing that can save us. Nothing else can save us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come unto the Father but by me. And so when the Bible says that we're saved, what are we saved from? You know, when we begin to think about that, what are we saved from? Well, we're saved from our sins, first of all. You know, Jesus paid the, the penalty of sin. Jesus paid the price of sin. He died for sin once and for all. And so, uh, you know, as we look at that, we're saved by our sins. The Bible tells us very, very clearly that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so as we think about that, we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We have to be saved from our sin. Why do we have to be saved from our sin? Because the Bible tells us then that the wages of sin is death. And so we also have to be saved from death since the wages of sin is death and we've all sinned. Therefore, we're all going to die and say, well, people that said that they're Christians, they still died, right? Well, no, they really didn't die. Their bodies died, but the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so their spirit didn't die. Their soul didn't die. They're alive today. They're alive right now. In fact, not only are they alive, there's folks in this world right now that do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And the Bible says and they are dead in their transgressions and sin. Now, their lungs might be breathing, their heart might be beating, they might go to a doctor. Doctor says you're a picture of health, but guess what? The Bible says they're dead in their transgressions and sins. Why are they dead? Because they're separated from God. And if they die in that state, the Bible says they're going to experience the second death. And so you need to be saved from your sin right? And because the wages of sin is death. And so since you need to be saved from your sin because the wages of sin is death, and if you die in your sin, then you're going to experience the second death. And what is the second death? The second death is the lake of fire. And so if you die in your sins, then you die in death and you experience the second death. You're going to then one day stand before the judgment seat of Christ because you know the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. And so we stand before judgment. Your name's not written in the Lamb's book of life because you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So you died in your sins because you weren't saved from your sins and your sins weren't wiped out. They weren't blotted out. Therefore, since your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, you're going to be cast into the eternal lake of fire forever and ever and ever and ever of which you have no hope of ever escaping. And you know what the worst part about hell is? It's not going to be the flames that's going to be lapping your body for all eternity. It's not going to be the utter darkness. It's not going to be all of those torturous things of hell. I believe that the worst part of hell is going to be the fact that you're going to be there for eternity and you know that you're going to be there for eternity and there's no hope. None. No hope of escape whatsoever. But for t friends, today there's hope. Jesus will save us from our sins. And the Bible says he'll remove those sins as far as the east is from the west. He'll wipe those sins out. He'll blot those sins out. Completely cleanse us from all of our sins. 
And since our sins are wiped out, the wages of sin is death. According to Romans 6.23, the rest of Romans 6.23 says, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we won't have to pay the price for the wages of our sin. Jesus already paid that price. And if we trust in him, he'll wipe those sins out and we don't have to worry about death. And we have eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, that is wonderful news. We deserve death. We deserve hell. We deserve condemnation. But instead, he offers salvation. Salvation from death, from salvation from our sin, salvation from death, salvation from eternal damnation, eternal death separated from him. Instead, he gives us life and eternal life in him because he's paid the price for our sins. He's defeated death, hell, and the grave. He's risen from the grave to give all who will receive him eternal life. Friends, that's the best news that you'll ever hear in your life. Glorious news. Would you receive him today? Trust in him today. Believe on him today. In Jesus' name. Trust in him and share this video so others can hear it and others can receive it once they believe it.